And now, for our next keynote, please welcome the CEO of Hudson's Bay Company, Helena Folks. Hello. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you so very much for being here. And I've been at Hudson's Bay Company for about one year. Uh, before that, I spent 25 years at CVS. I ended my uh, time there as president of an $80 billion retailer in the pharmacy space. So you might say to yourself, why the heck did she move the, to the department store business, right? It's not naturally the place everyone's thinking about. But I came for two very important reasons. The first is, I saw it as a real opportunity to build an amazing team. And the second is, I was really excited to rewrite the story of the department store industry. That's why I came to HBC one year ago. So I want to start by sharing with you who we are. We have some iconic brands. HBC is consisted of Saks, Lord & Taylor, Saks Off Fifth, and Hudson's Bay. And what I'll do right now is just share with you a video so you can get a sense for who we are. The whole point of this was to create the ultimate oasis of beauty for the luxury customer. And that's why we moved it upstairs. Vogue, Saks, and me. Perfect. Julia Louis-Dreyfus, Saks Fifth Avenue 2018 Key to the Cure Ambassador. A sure sign the festive season is on the way. Hudson's Bay unveiling this year's holiday windows. At Saks, we look at this as our gift to the city, and it's our responsibility to bring experience and something very magical for the holiday season. We have to be customer first. You don't win in retail unless you care about the customer. So as you can see, we are a company of truly iconic brands. And uh, my job is to build a team so we can be stewards of these great brands. And today I'm gonna to talk a lot about culture because as we thought about this transformation we're making, we're really focusing on two areas I wanna give you a sense for. The first is building customer champions. And the second is driving real accountability in our business. And so I'm gonna focus mostly on Saks and Hudson's Bay. Those are our two biggest businesses where we see really great momentum and we're focused on the upside we can drive in those businesses. But before I talk about results and what we're doing, I wanna start with something that's really important to me and I'm sure many of you as you think about your businesses. And that's really the power of purpose, right? To get our teams to be excited about what they're doing, they have to believe we're doing something really important. So when we think about purpose, we think about it in two ways. First is to make radically better experiences to wow our customers, building off of the unique strengths that we have. And the second is to create the most engaged workforce in retail, a team of people who have a real sense of pride for what they do. So the question is, how do you execute all of that? And as many of you know, all of you know, we're living in a highly disruptive environment. And to break through all this noise, we've got to deliver exceptional customer experience. And I use this word radical a lot, and, and it's sort of interesting in the department store business, but I'm thinking about how do we radically improve the customer experience. And to radically improve that, I feel we need to start with the change from within. So we're using change from within as a mindset change and that's the foundation for everything we're doing to capitalize on all these strengths. So what do I mean by that? Um, when I arrived a year ago, one of the things that was the most striking to me 
was the customer really didn't have a seat at the table. We were making very big decisions on his or her behalf, and we weren't always listening to what she wanted. So this required really radical culture change for us. And so we've been focused on how do we instill this in the organization, and we've landed on four key principles for how we do this. The first is get personal. That relates to both the customers we serve and how we treat each other. The second is fail fast, fail cheap. Now, I know many people talk about that. When I talk about that, I really mean fail. If we're setting up tests that don't have some failures, we haven't pushed far enough. The third is to marry art and science. We all have amazing data in this business, but there's an intuition that exists in our category, which makes it really fun and interesting. And finally, prioritizing the game changers. We have so many opportunities to drive the business, and I'm sure you do too. The question for all of us is, am I working on the things that can really make a difference? So I'm gonna share a few stories with you now, and what I hope to do is bring these principles to life for you. So the first story is about Hudson's Bay. So for those of you who don't know much about Canada, you may not know that Hudson's Bay is the largest department store chain in Canada. We have 90 stores essentially everywhere the consumer is in Canada. And what was really striking to me when I got here is the passion and love Canadians feel for Hudson's Bay. It's written into their history and it's very much part of their identity as Canadians. So uh, as we were thinking about how to drive that business, it was a good example of not having a view of what the customer really thought about us. So I came from a world where every morning when I got into the office, I'd open up my computer. The first thing I would look at is a dashboard for what the customer had told us yesterday. How were we doing? And what was interesting to me about HBC is we didn't have this in place. So the first thing we did is we developed a net promoter score we rolled it out across all of the chain by September. And what was exciting for me is how the team rallied around this. They were really eager to use it and make the experience better for their customers. So at Hudson's Bay, we found three pain points that these customers were telling us about. The first was the checkout experience. The second was associate availability. And the third was fitting rooms. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what the team did around, around the checkout experience. But I have to start by saying I'm really proud of the team because they created dozens of tests that we started working on. But as they dug into checkout, what they discovered is we had people standing in line who wanted to buy product, but we also had people standing in line who wanted to return. And that was really slowing the line down. So the team uh, developed a digital return center, a, a central spot within the store. We tested it in 10 stores, and what we found uh, was really tremendous, but what was striking about it is in Canada, 97% of our returns from the bay.com go back to our stores. So that's a great opportunity for us to help these customers find what they were really looking for and make it easier. So as we did these tests in the 10 stores, we saw a really nice lift in the net promoter score. So across all of them, the net promoter score for the entire store went up by four points. And uh, to me, that's a great example of the team moving really fast to attack something that mattered a lot to our customers. So it's all about quickly uh, testing actionable ideas with a fail fast, fail cheap mentality, while also marrying the art and science of what we love about retail. So one of the things that also really brought me to HBC was the opportunity to radically rethink and redefine the department store space. There's a lot of competition in the luxury market. Why shop at Saks when you can buy Gucci at a Gucci store or go online to Net-A-Porter? And we had to really think about what our customers were looking for from us. And this was all about unmatched customer experience. They were coming for theater, excitement, and personalized service. So the Saks team has been really hard at work in the last few years. We've invested over $250 million just in redoing this store. It's a great example of a highly immersive environment. And I want to uh, share with you a little bit about it, but I'd say overall, it's a great example of a team upping the ante on the in-store experience. So these are some photos of before. So before the renovation, 
Uh, it looked like a traditional department store. The sight lines were a little rough, uh, and you could see that uh, this was a, a main floor where you had to go far to get back to the elevators. There were people in the beauty department spritzing you everywhere, and it was, you know, very traditional. Uh, there was also a handbag department around the edge, but we weren't taking full advantage of that. And the team really knew we could reimagine this experience when, when people walked in our doors. So today, if you walk in our Saks flagship store, which I highly recommend that you do, you are greeted by a main floor where we tripled the luxury handbag offering. We created a luxury handbag shopping experience that is truly unlike any place else in the world. The space features 50 brands, and we also have 100 products that the team put together that are exclusive to us just for this launch. We also have the latest brand shops. This is just one great example of it. And we installed a brand new escalator uh, right in the middle of the floor. This didn't exist before. And our team wanted to create an easy experience so shoppers didn't have to go back to the elevators or back to the escalators. So we punched a hole up into the second floor and down to the bottom floor, and it creates this real sense of energy and discovery. This is a REM Cool House designed escalator, and I'm gonna show you now how it takes you up to the second floor, where from up here you can see that energy, you can feel it, and you're greeted by an entirely new second floor beauty department. So in beauty, we know the customer tells us lighting's really critical. We've opened up the windows on our Fifth Avenue uh, store, the side of the store, so natural light now is coming up on this floor, and it's really quite elegant. In fact, customers are telling us it feels to them like an oasis. Uh, you can see here we have a beauty concierge who we've introduced, and she's there to help you navigate the floor, or even to sign you up for services that you might be interested in. So the team really used this as an opportunity to, retail, to rethink retail and focus on services and experiences. We have 15 treatment rooms. We have a face gym, a skinny med spa. You can get brow threading, a whole bunch of other services that exist inside this store. I personally am a huge fan of face gym. If you get a chance, I encourage you to come try it. It's a workout on your face for 30 minutes, and uh, it's a lot of fun, and, and I don't know what it's doing for me yet, but I'm enjoying it. So these are the kinds of changes that our team is thinking about. A perfect example of art when we talk about marrying art and science is the restaurant. This is a picture of the previous restaurant, but what we've done is we've really brought theater to our restaurant environment. So uh, we took La Venue, which is a destination restaurant in Paris, and we're now the first outpost of La Venue outside of Paris. Uh, this is in the heart of our restaurant, and this is a picture of the new. It was designed by Philippe Stark, has a true Parisian menu, and it's really a game changer in the New York restaurant scene. Uh, it has a private elevator, so you can come up all hours. We keep the restaurant open outside of store hours. And customers have told us they love the vibe. It feels chic and cool. Uh, the food's very good, but it's very seedy as well, so it's a, it's a really fun place to be. Obviously, we think this is a great way to attract new customers and keep the ones we have feeling really delighted with the whole overall experience at Saks. So hopefully what you get a sense for here is all of this work on the renovation that I've been talking about is a great example of the team prioritizing the game changers and also really thinking about this marriage of art and science. So as you know, the retail environment is moving quickly to digital, and uh, we're seeing this more and more in the luxury space with uh, players like Farfetch and Net-A-Porte. And while many of you may not think of Saks as a digital player, our digital penetration is really quite high. But what we found is, in addition to e-commerce, people are looking for a different kind of experience. In our category, touch and fit and feel really matters. So what we're leveraging is our 4,500 style advisors across all of our stores who are really our competitive advantage. These are real people who are marrying with digital tools to personalize the experience. We're arming them with the right omni-channel tools, and they're using this to approach uh, clienteling 
with really an entrepreneurial mindset. So what we think is that the true winning model is this marriage of omni-channel tools with a, digital, with a personalized in-store experience. So as I said, our 4,500 style advisors are our secret sauce. So I want to introduce you now to one of them. Her name's Becca, and I want you to see how she's using these tools. What we provided for Becca is her own uh, page online. She can chat, live chat with her customers. Uh, they can request appointments. She sends emails to them. Uh, and she's really taking care of all of their personal shopping needs. This is uh, an example of how she is regularly updating her page every day, in fact, with her favorites. And she's creating pic uh, pictures of looks that she's really thinking are exciting from the collection. So some of her customers, one of them in particular, for example, doesn't live near a SAC store. She's a busy working executive who travels a lot. And she's in constant touch with Becca through these digital tools. And Becca is sending her lookbooks of things that she thinks her customer might like. When she's in New York, she can come in and try things on. But otherwise, Becca is sending her product back and forth and using all the digital tools. So this is a massive integration that the team created to connect our store ecosystem with our digital platforms. And what you can see is this can really radically enhance the customer experience. So I know everyone here has Instagram, and I'm assuming many of you have also shopped on Instagram. Uh, but at Saks, we're not only focused on the Saks brand as a style authority, we're also leveraging our style advisors as social influencers. So a number of our style advisors are now connecting with customers through Instagram and selling through the platform. So I want you to meet Ricky. Uh, Ricky is a style advisor at our Saks flagship store. And he uses social media to interact and create personal relationships. He's posting every day, and he's creating a great sense of urgency. He says things like, if I have it, it's yours. And here are a couple of his recent posts. Uh, the one on the left, I think, is spectacular. He tells a story of how he helped the bride find the perfect wedding shoes. And then the one on the right is an example of one of his frequent uh, favorite shots. So, a majority of our 4,500 style advisors are, are, are focused on creating their own Instagram identities. And what that's doing for us as a brand is it's really helping position Saks as a fashion authority. In fact, when we hire today, we ask potential uh, hirees about their social media presence. And so this is a really unique way of thinking about playing to our unique strengths and, and giving our team uh, unparalleled digital tools to help them do what they need to do. And to me, it's an exciting example of getting personal, of marrying art with science, and focusing again on the game changers. So I just want to close by saying it's been an incredible first year. I am so proud of the team at Hudson's Bay. They're doing spectacular work. We're making real progress. And in this environment, companies that thrive are those that are focused on radical change and that change, we really believe, starts from within. So thank you all very much.